at the start of the session and that question was if a company decides that they're capable and committed and if they have identified a potential market to enter how should they operate and organize that business if they decide to do so this is really a critical question and very challenging one to answer but there are two frameworks or tools that can help us at this stage of the decision-making process. The first tool is called the OLI framework, and the second tool is called the IR grid. So let's start by talking first about the OLI framework. When a company completes the OLI analysis, they can determine what form or operational mode in international business terminology, what form they should use on a specific market or country. For example, should they license their product to someone on that market, or should they export indirectly or directly to that market? Or, they need, or do they need to make a bigger commitment? For example, a direct foreign investment on that market they're considering. For example, building a factory, or buying a factory, or a distribution center, etc. In international business, these choices are often referred to as the modes of operation. And the form of mode selected is determining, determined by analyzing your company's advantages or capabilities. So when doing the OLI for each foreign country, you might be considering entering you might ask some of the following questions based on your capabilities. One, do we have only an ownership advantage? And if so, maybe we should focus on licensing. Number two, do we have an ownership advantage and an internalization advantage? If so, maybe we should focus on exporting, indirect or direct. Number three, do we have advantages in ownership, internalization, and location? In other words, all three OLI criteria. And if so, maybe we should focus on investing directly in the country we're considering, or countries. Now, you might not understand those three parts I just discussed, so let's say a few words about each of these three different advantages. Ownership, internalization, and location. Ownership advantage means that our company has a competitive advantage over others. It makes it more likely that we have an ability to successfully do business in any or specific or a specific foreign country. Those advantages could be a superior brand, a superior product, some specialized know-how, etc. That's ownership. Internalization advantage means that our company would be better off to carry out activities on our own because we have some internal capabilities which are unique and give us an advantage over other companies whom we might be competing with. Those advantages could be a production process which is unique or know-how or systems that we have for operating which are unique and superior to other companies. Really important internalization advantage. And finally, we have location advantage. And location advantage requires us to ask, do we have on our home market the necessary resources and know-how? For example, market know-how, money, raw materials, labor cost, advantages, etc., which are enough for us to compete successfully on the target market we're considering alone. We don't need anything else. If we determine that our company doesn't have all the necessary advantages we listed, then we have to consider how we might obtain those. And that might mean we need to consider investing in a country, because we need to obtain them by being in that country. Otherwise, we don't succeed. We may need the low labor cost. We may need the raw materials they have. We may need the know-how they have. 
So based on the OLI analysis we make, if we see we have advantages in all three areas, ownership, internalization, and location, then we are in a very strong position for making a direct investment in a market we're considering, that's what we call foreign direct investment. But if we only have ownership and internal advantages, then it might be better for us to just consider exporting indirectly or directly to that target market. And finally, if we only have ownership advantage, we're better off maybe selling a license for our product or know-how to someone who will use that on a foreign market or sell it for us on a foreign market. In other words, let someone else do all the rest of the work. Now, if we have no advantages at all in those three areas, guess what? Maybe we're not ready to risk getting involved in international business. Unless, of course, we might learn something by doing that. That's the cost of learning. We might lose money. And that something could help us get better at home. But remember, learning takes time, can be expensive, and it is risky. But more often than not, often it is necessary to learn. So the OLI framework is a really very useful tool. And the OLI framework is great for any company who's considering getting involved in international business. Because the OLI framework can help us evaluate every single market or country we might be considering. Plus, OLI can help us decide which operational mode would be best for us based on the ownership, internalization, and location advantages we have or we possess.